here with our brother from Arissa. Yeah. Thank you. It's been nice to meet you and to talk yeah. to you for the last yeah. two days. And uh, I just want to start by having you introduce yourself to us so we can get to know you. Yeah, myself, I'm TK Raju. And uh, coming from Orissa, and the part of the uh, Orissa is uh, Raigada, where I minister, and uh, I work for God, and uh, basically I'm working uh, among children. People, you know, bringing children to Christ, leading them to Christ. Excellent. Well, this interview is going to be in two parts, and one part is where we're going to see uh, kind of a learn about you, and the other part of the interview was going to be how we're going to learn about uh, India as a whole, especially and particularly Christianity in India. So the first question uh, I'm going to ask you is just, what has the Lord done in your life? What is the greatest lessons that you've been learning uh, from the Lord? Yeah, surely I think these days, you know, many lessons, but one of the lessons is that, you know, I should trust more in Him. I should more, you know, Trust in Him for all the things that I need. That's been really a big lesson for you. Yeah. Um, we're going to move on to the church now, and then we're going to come back to you again. Um, second question is just, how have you observed Christ building His church in India? Yeah, of course there are many good churches. I know Christ has built, and uh, I will. I have seen a good faithful churches, and they all you know walk according to God's will. They find God's will and they all like to be with God and uh, in praying and uh, fasting and doing all the spiritual activities. So it's a really building up. Uh, in some areas it's probably building up more than others. Uh, in Orissa, particularly if I see, of course, in Orissa we see the present condition is not okay. I think uh, comparing with other states, but uh, uh, comparing with other states is little less in Orissa. Okay. Well, since you're from Orissa, I'm going to ask some questions about Orissa also. Okay. Uh, I'll try to gear the questions for that. Okay. And before we get there, though, uh, what, for you, what is the greatest motivation for ministry? Yeah, for me, it's, uh, the greatest motivation can be God's love, because I know what I am. So, a person is in need of God's love. Now, I need a love, you know, since I am also an orphan, somebody was not caring for me, so I know the agony, the pain that somebody goes through. And, uh, you know, when I tried God's word and um, God's love in my life in 2001, so I have accepted my um, Jesus as my personal Savior, and then I started sick and I could feel joy and happiness and all the fruits of gifts in my life, and I was uh, very much happy. And when I look at others, so they are so much distressed, so they are so much tense about their life. So I thought that it is very good to share, and it is my responsibility also to share about God's love. So it's the God's love has motivated me to do ministry of God. Uh, this is also just kind of to get to know you. Uh, okay. Fourth question is just. What is your vision for ministry? Okay, vision. I have a lot of goals, uh, setting goals for to fulfill my vision. Uh, but basically, my vision is to reach people with the word of God. You know, they need to uh, know Jesus properly, perfectly. Not simply knowing something, but they have to be very perfect in knowing God. So that's one of the my main visions that I reach. You know, I have a vision to reach all India. Okay. Um, how you're an evangelist? Yes. How does an Indian evangelist reaches people with the gospel? Yeah, in India it's a different thing. I think for me, I have seen personally, and because many times I went with sometimes carrying Bible or distributing traps, it's very much less applicable. But it's very good if we can have some uh, spiritual exercises that we can do, like miracles or anything can happen. So this is the actually you know in these days, uh, the particular for me you know, when I go to a person who is in need of uh, 
uh, God's love or healing or a special day. Something is might be having a problem. And I pray over him and he gives a healing and he listens to the word of God and then on his call of Christ. Uh, in Arissa, where you're from, okay. is there any special methods or any special way which you proclaim the gospel to the people? Yeah, this can be, um, we cannot, because since a lot of problems are going on, we cannot have a big crusades and all. But still, I believe we can have a personal evangelism. So individually, we have to uh, make a believer. And then he is also responsible for other people. And he also has to go and this say, and a type of a circle. And you know, it goes. Like this, like making disciples. Mm-hmm. So that's the way I think it can be spread more in Orisha rather than having a lot of mass conversations. Okay, that's very helpful. Um, can you give me uh, an example of a typical gospel proclamation in a village or a street corner or city? Uh, and you can make it as a story if you have any good stories, you can share that. Yeah, I have uh, good stories like prodigal songs. Of course, I have gone through a uh, diplomatic program on storytelling. So I sometimes like to tell more about the prodigal son, the story. You know, he was uh, the person who was lost. Actually, he had to go away from his family, and he had to do all the things, and uh, he uh, was uh, you know, lost totally from the uh, from the father's family. But he was back. And his father was so happy. You know, I present the story in front of the villagers. And when I go to the villagers, of course, there is not much opposition. So I typically I tell the story, and they really are excited. And sometimes the response is very nice. Hmm. Um, what are you uh, What are you reading these days? And have, uh, what in particular have you learned from reading? Yeah, um, these days I particularly, uh, I don't get much time to read the books, but I uh, focus more on children ministries, so I try to read all my notes, collecting good notes, and preparing for myself to teach Sunday school teachers, and also uh, teaching the elders of the church so that they may also be interested to help and to contribute something for the ministry, since we have need of uh, um, some encouragement for our children ministries. Uh, do you have any uh, special goals for improvement and growth this year that you're excited about? Yeah, of course I had a uh, goal last year but I couldn't fulfill it because yeah, of uh, the, uh, I applied for that uh, to God. And, but still, uh, last year I had a target to complete Bible but a lot of works in the ministry is so it was unavoidable but still this year I'm uh, planning to develop my spiritual life uh, whether the last year yesterday also I have taken a decision that I continue to grow in the Lord that's my promise and I have some strategies to develop my spiritual life praise the Lord can you just explain to us uh, what the Indian pastor's life looks like on a daily basis uh, of course, uh, we cannot, you know, neglect or we cannot say it's 100% okay or not. But one of the things that I have of the pastors, there are good pastors. They are faithful pastors. They essentially work for God. They lead um, the sheep or the believers in a right path. I have seen some good pastors. At the same time, there are some nominal pastors. They are, I think they are not being touched by the Lord. Just it is a formality that they make like some men like that, but still there are good pastors and they have a good and more moral life and a very nice country. So we can do the last question. Okay. And this is basically just for us to see what's on your heart and to see what's really uh, affecting you these days. Um, yeah. So what, uh, of all the things kind of going on in your life and in your heart, what would be the, the thing which you really would love to share with the church in the West? Okay, one of the things is that, you know, it's a very good that we had an interview now. Uh, but one of the hindrances I see in the church of India, some hindrances, which is not really you know, encouraging our people, especially I know I'm working among children, so I know the situation that children go. And I believe that uh, since I believe a story, and there is a fact that Billy Graham, while he was five days, and he accepted the personal savior. And I believe a child can also be saved. So I think we should focus more on children 
because they are very special for Christ mm. and uh, you know, they are very special because they live long. You know, D.L. Modi once said that you know, he loves children. So there are several factors and several incidents happen all over the world and also in India, like the life of Mother Teresa. So it's very important for us, I think, to concentrate on children because they are the future of the nation, future of the generation. So if you can give a life teaching to them, I think if their lives are turned away from all the naughty or bad things in their childhood, I think they will be a perfect people in the society. So just I would like to tell to the Western people or anybody in the world that just uh, let us work for children, let us uh, not delay or uh, let us not to be very attempt in working children but uh, let us help to build them in spiritually, emotionally, mentally, what all the things we can so that they also can be a mighty people for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh.